Hello, hello, everyone. Blessings on this Tuesday evening. Amanda Grace and friends in the office here with you tonight for a very special broadcast. Uh, I have Andrew Sorcini with us of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, and I'm going to open up in prayer, and we're going to talk about why this is important. Uh, he's going to talk about it from a market standpoint. I'm going to talk about it from a biblical standpoint. Uh, and maybe even how this relates back to maybe what happened in 2007 as well. I'm coming on twice today because I have to go do some things the rest of the week, but I wanted to make sure to spend time with all of you and to give you some resources right now with what I see is happening in the world. I think it's wise for all of us to see counsel uh, of those who are believers and those that are in different industries as well, because I prophesied about a lot of these industries many times from the Lord. So it'll go hand in hand. So let me just pray quick and we're going to bring Andrew in. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you. We praise you that you are God. You are high and lifted up. You are far above every power, principality and might. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that we become less so you become more in our lives. Acknowledging you sent your one only son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to the earth in the form of a man in the flesh to be the Passover lamb, to be the sacrifice, to be the atonement because we had a debt we couldn't pay being found being sinners and found guilty lord under your righteous laws and we praise you father god that he purchased us by the shedding of his blood when he was beaten bruised whipped crushed and pierced and nailed to a cross and that blood dripped onto the mercy seat father god we praise you lord that it purchased us back to you father god and after he was buried, he miraculously rose again in three days, ascended back to you where he rules and reigns at your right hand forevermore. And we praise you that Jesus is Lord. And we honor that before you today. Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would go before us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, lead and guide us, Father God, during this broadcast. Fill us as your vessels, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, Lord. We just ask you to send your holy warring angels to surround and protect and dismantle, cancel and abort every plot, scheme, contract, assignment, and attempt of the enemy, Lord. Father God, we just pray by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth come forth, Lord. Father, we just ask you to take all the glory for yourself. We are the we are the clay and you are the potter. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Lord, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. Amen. And I'm going to introduce this, this very knowledgeable gentleman to you who I had the pleasure of meeting. And we're going to bring him in now. This is Andrew Sorcini. Welcome of Beverly Hills Precious Metals. Hi, Amanda. How you doing? Wonderful. I warned Andrew ahead of time, everybody, about the animals in the office. So we'll see how this goes. This could be, this could get pretty funny, uh, you know, midway through our talk here about all of this. I showed him some of the animals to start uh, before we went live. So let's talk about, Andrew, what you do, first of all, for everybody. Um, I would say in a nutshell, I help people diversify their portfolios by uh, helping them acquire physical gold and silver. And uh, it's more important now than ever to have. Okay. So let's talk about that because, you know, I, and I talked about this today with, with uh, we were, I was talking with Dr. Sherwood earlier, who, you know, and uh, why it's important for us to seek good counsel and to gain wisdom in different areas right now of our lives with all the deception and the craziness, the enemy and the corrupt are attempting to flood the airways with the markets, the health industry. So why is this important for believers to know what's going on a in the economy, but b how to handle it? It's probably like the biggest reason right now would have to be inflation. Um, inflation is the highest it's been in a very long time. The uh, monthly inflation rate right now is at 5.3%. So that means that anything that you buy, mostly goods and services, um, commodities, um, are up at least 5.3%. So your, your dollar is still worth a dollar. So if things cost more, your dollar is buying less. So you need like, you need some sort of insurance policy that you could um, hedge what you're losing in value in the dollar with something else. And gold and silver are an excellent way to do that. So in a nutshell, that's the definition of inflation. Absolutely. It is. It's a uh, right now. Uh, also, there's a lot of greed with the stock market. Uh, people, the stock market has been an amazing way to make money for the last 10 years. 
And uh, it's very, very easy for people to believe like, okay, 10 years ago, I started with 30,000. Now I've got 80,000. I'm a stock trader. I know what I'm doing, but anybody can make money in a down market. So this, really people should consider taking the money and running and uh, put it into something that they could uh, have a store of value. You know what's interesting about you saying this, Andrew, and this is why I thought it would be great to bring Andrew on because I just talked about, it was, it was two days ago, I think. It might have even been yesterday, but I think it was a couple of days ago. Two dreams I had had, right? And the, this dream happened, I think, October 6th, this particular dream. Um, you know, the Lord gives me dreams. You know, he speaks to me prophetically. Andrew, you know, Andrew is aware <laughs> of what goes on with me. But in the dream, I was taken into this house that looked like a business and there were these men and they looked to be on the stock market. Okay. And then suddenly across all the screens in gold letters and capital letters, the words urgent started flashing and stocks started plummeting. And I mean plummeting where they were like giving the numbers like one after the other like this as they were plummeting. And this was the dream. And I had woken up. And I thought to myself, okay, well, the last time we saw this happen with the stock market, because, you know, some people, you know, call it a, in some ways, you know, you're, you're gambling basically in the stock market. You know, it's, it's not as secure as, you know, gold and silver or, you know, other means of, of, you know, investment. But when's the last time that because I've prophesied some of this from the Lord, so I would find this interesting. The stock market kind of just went and plummeted. It was a, it was the beginning of the 2008 financial crisis. It, it was okay. right after, just as you just said, leading up to 2007, the stock market was sky high. Real estate was sky high. And I just remember like um, talking with many people. You look at a house and you go, you see that house right there? I remember two years ago, that house was 600000 and today it's $1 million. They're mm -hmm. like, wow. And everybody agreed that at that point, back in 2006, 2007, that one day, one day soon, that the stock market and the real estate market would have a crash. We all knew it was coming. But when it came, people were just devastated. Okay. So we have some good questions coming in as we're talking. So I'm going to rattle them off to you. Sure. Uh, many are asking if they can convert their 401k to gold and silver. They can. And that's a good question. And right now is a good time to get into a little bit of specific about that. Um, if you have a 401k from a previous mm -hmm. employer, you can definitely roll it over. If you have a 401k at a place that you're still employed at, then you should check with human resources and just see, just go to them and say, Hey, I'm thinking about converting a portion of my 401k to precious metals. And I just want to check with you first. Is this something that this company will allow? One out of three times you can. Okay. And let's see what else people are asking because, oh, people are asking if mortgages and, and banks are safe right now. So maybe you can get a little bit into that too. I'm looking at these questions because people have a lot of questions, which is great. This is why we're doing this because we have to be equipped as the body of Christ. We have to use wisdom and we have to take the wisdom God gives us and be wise and be good stewards of what God gives us as well. So maybe you can get into mortgages in the banking industry as a whole sure. right now. Sure. There's um. I have a client of mine that lives in in Northern California, and she's she's trading with a, an enormous multi million dollar um, portfolio of all sorts of different investments. But she's made the bulk of what she of what she's made from commercial real estate, and with she has the cash to back everything, but she still uses the bank's money. She gets loans on the properties, mm -hmm. and um, she's gone and she's applied for loans and just been told flat out no. She's like almost an 850 credit score. Wow. And, and she's like, and she has the cash to back it. And the banks aren't wanting to lend her to the money. And that's like a major, major red flag. Also, the uh, like Wells Fargo, for example, about three, four months ago, they discontinued this line of credit that they offer to different small businesses out there. Mm -hmm. I know because I've gotten that email before. I've never used it, but it says you've been pre-qualified for hundred thousand dollar line of credit. Well, some of these businesses they need that. They get a hundred yes. or two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and they live off of Absolutely. that. 
um, with their inventory and they just uh, they churn it. Well, those have been discontinued. And you look at the economy and stocks and real estate and it's so robust, even coming out of, of uh, COVID that mm-hmm. you wonder why would they do that? And I feel like they have the signals. They're seeing that the writing is on the wall and that a collapse is coming. There's a book of Daniel reference right there, everybody. <laughs> Seriously, mm-hmm. remember the hand wrote on the wall right it before uh, King Belshazzar lost uh, basically everything he had. And then the hand came and wrote Mene Mene Tekel Ufarsin. So I find, I, I find it interesting because that you said this, I'm going to tell you why. Wally's already starting to make noises. You may not hear him yet, but he's already started. He just made a tooting noise that wasn't very nice. And we'll just ignore that for now until he decides to, uh, you know, to play nice. But when I talked to Chase Bank, I don't know, we'll say two months ago, okay, a month and a half ago even, the loan officer said to me, this is one of the worst times to get a loan ever. And they are in the business of giving people loans to make money on interest. And you've got the loan officers at one of the biggest banking conglomerates in our nation saying it is not a good time to get a loan. And if you can, to buy things cash. It's true. It's true. Like there's just a lot of things happening with the banks. There's a there's another thing that I've had happen at my Wells Fargo branch. And mm-hmm. I've talked about it before. They, um, they've scaled down the people that work in that actual branch to about a fourth of what was there before. Okay. And, and I ask them, I go, why would you do that? Like the, you still have the same number of people coming in every single day. Why would you scale it down to one fourth? And they said, look, we just, we want to make it so hard and so difficult for you to come into a branch yeah. that the people that are um, technologically adverse, that we want for them to just, step out of their comfort zone and try doing some of the stuff online. And they really, they don't want us going in there. I go, then why would you have a brick and mortar still? And they said, well, we want, we need that for when you can come in and we can try to sell you something. So if there's a service that you don't already have, they'll gladly have you come in and get it. But for the regular banking stuff, they, they don't want us going in there. They want everything electronic. They want electronic checks with your phone, take a picture of the check, everything. Yes. And, and that's probably in the past, probably four years revved up even more with all of this electronic banking and taking pictures of checks and doing everything remotely and doing your banking remotely. We've got some people. Okay. I'm seeing a couple questions over and over again. So they're asking, what is the cost in converting an IRA, uh, you know, converting it or to gold? Okay. So the costs are the same. It's the same for if it's $2 million account or if it's a $20,000 account. Okay. Uh, we, That's good to know. Yeah. It's not bad at all. The, mm-hmm. the firm that we use that, uh, that handles the IRAs is a firm by the name of Equity Institutional. They're an IRA custodian that would be similar to like, um, like a, um, AG Edwards or, um, or, um, Fidelity or a Vanguard. It's just one that handles precious metals and you need a broker to do that. So we facilitate that. It's $80 a year. Okay. And, and you can't store the precious metals at your home if you're getting, if you're obtaining them through a precious metals IRA, but that's okay. Cause if you figure that your, your existing IRA, let's say it's with Vanguard and you have stocks, you're, you can call a broker and have them sell a position and get you into another position, but you're not physically doing that. You're on your own interface. So you're basically taking funds that you can't touch from one place and you're putting funds that you can't touch into another place, but the new place holds precious metals. So it's stored in a depository and it's a hundred dollars a year. So that's it. Just $180 a year. Wow. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Yeah, fifty dollars to start. It's just a one-time setup fee, and we don't charge those. That's the custodian does. Exactly. So, okay, so. I'm writing questions down as I'm seeing them. People are very curious, Andrew. This is great because they have a lot of questions. Okay, uh, I see quite a few people asking about something called XRP cryptocurrency. Oh yeah, that's a Ripple. It's a, a Ripple's one of my favorite ones. It's I, I do like cryptocurrency, but really, it's okay. it's um it's gambling. It's if you're if you're involved in cryptocurrency, it's 
I believe you can make a lot of money. At one time, I made over $100,000 from Ripple alone in like 45 days, and I started with 5,000. I knocked it out of the park, but then I didn't sell it fast enough, and it went right back down to below where I bought it. So cryptocurrency is gambling. So we would call it a high-risk investment. Very, very, very mm -hmm. high risk. And the people that we deal with are people that are looking to protect their retirement. They're looking to protect yes. everything that they've earned in the stock market and in real estate in the last 10 years. So they don't really go hand in hand. And, you know, people that want to know more about crypto, we don't we don't help with that at all. I've um, I've done cryptocurrency IRAs for people in the past. The first person that did it, it funded with 30,000. It went down to like 5,000. Yeah. And, and he closed no it out right now. A huge loss. Yeah. But but he took a he took physical possession of the codes for his cryptocurrency on a flash drive and he still has it today and now bitcoins over like 57,000 so he's actually up quite a bit mm -hmm. so uh, but i felt so bad after that it happened and he's a long time gold and silver client so he understood the risks involved and but i just felt bad and i didn't want to do that so i i got completely out of that um, good for you andrew yeah yeah it's um, i didn't feel good okay so People are asking if their savings accounts are safe if the market crashes. It, um, what happens? Well, in Greece, back in a little bit after the 2008 financial crisis, when, mm -hmm. when you're in America, we were talking about bailouts, like um, mm -hmm. like uh, um, AI government bailouts. Uh, yeah, government bailouts. Mm -hmm. um, Greece had what they call a bail-in, and that's where the government takes a portion of their savings account to help bail the company, I mean, the country out of bankruptcy. And, and that's what they did. So, so once that was announced, all the people that, that uh, the citizens of Greece, they just went to the ATMs. They go, I'm just gonna take out as much cash as I can. Well, it, when they got to the ATMs, everybody had the same idea. The ATMs were emptied out and there was people that didn't have cash, like maybe people that aren't that healthy or a little bit elderly. They, they weren't able to rush to the ATMs and they were forced to have to barter. And um, I think having gold and silver is an excellent way to barter in an emergency situation because especially the 90% silver coins that we sell, those are, uh, those are like a secondary currency. They're made of silver. So yeah. it's a good way to go. Okay. Uh, people are asking too, uh, two things. So they're asking... Should they pay off their mortgages right now? Which I think this is interesting. I think maybe you could touch on this. He's really more, you know, gold and silver, but I'm sure he, he is very well versed in this. So people are asking that. I see that over and over again in the chat. Sure. Well, I uh, just uh, first a little disclaimer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually not a financial advisor. So yeah. anything that we talk about really is just my opinion. Yes. But when it comes to gold and silver and some other things, I, I am qualified in uh in 1985, I took my first job working at a coin shop and have been working in gold or silver in some form or fashion ever since then. And um, I'm a big believer of, um, of real assets, like hard assets, things that you can hold in your hand and touch. So I do think it's a good idea to, to own your property outright. I do. I don't think you should take a loan out against your property and invest in gold and silver. I think that's a terrible idea. Okay. Um, I think... Uh, I think if you have the funds to do it, then um, pay it off and free yourself of that mortgage and uh, and focus on protecting the rest of your portfolio. Well, I think that's I think that's very sound advice. And so if people wanted to begin, OK, so maybe they need to start small. OK, say because not everybody has one hundred thousand dollars in the bank or so where they could. But if they needed to start out small, what is a good initial investment amount for people to say, well, I can invest some. I don't have a ton in savings, but I have some in savings. What's a good invest initial investment? I think $5,000 is a good, just kind of dip your big toe in the water type okay. investment. You know, most people start with more than that. It's, you'd be very surprised. There are people out there that, uh, that have um, so much wealth in this country is, is uh, accumulated through uh, real estate and stocks. And we have a lot of people selling real estate right now because it's sky high. People cashing out of stocks because we've been on a good 10 year run, actually like 12, 13 years. So um, I'd like to see people start with with considerably more than that. But if they wanted to, 5,000 is a good number. You can get a whole lot of silver for 5,000. Okay. 
Uh, and also, what other advice can you give them about uh, buying gold and silver, about the market in general? People say, well, I really don't understand the market, uh, you know, as much when it comes to gold and silver. What kind of pointers can you give people who are just starting out? Oh, a few things. Um, don't get caught up in trying to, to buy on a, a market dip or not invest in gold and silver mm -hmm. because maybe gold had a good is up a lot that day. It's mm -hmm. uh, This is a longer term hold. It, you're investing in gold and silver based on where in your mind you think it can go price wise. Yes. Not, not so much what you can get it at today. So, so that would be one thing. Another thing which is very important is um, if you're talking to anybody about gold or silver, um, any anyone other than us, um, be careful and don't let them pressure you into doing it. This is a this is a an investment. I, I sometimes call it a purchase in error, but it's not a purchase. It's a conversion of of taking your green and turning it into gold or silver. And we still need green to pay bills and and mortgages and and car payments. If you ever did go a little bit too heavy in gold and silver and needed to turn it back into cash, we buy too. Okay. It's so how good. would they do that? So say somebody said, okay, I need to convert some of the gold and silver I have back into cash. How would that process work? Okay. So um, I'll give you the answer in an example that actually happened this week. Um, at the end of last week, a client that had bought um, a few of the 55 pound bags of silver that we sell and bought several of them. And um, they're very, very happy with the purchases. She calls me and she goes, I need to sell one. And I go, okay, you've only had them for a couple of months. And she goes, yeah, something came up. I need to sell it. I go, sure. So I quoted her price. I, I uh, sent her a purchase order and attached a prepaid insured FedEx air bill to that purchase order email. And uh, she just um, taped up the box, same box I shipped it in and uh, dropped it off at FedEx. And we received it two days later and we wired the funds right into her account. But uh, after all that was done, I just asked her, I go, hey, just satisfy my curiosity and let me know um, what, what is it that made you want to sell it when you just got it? And she just told me, she goes, a property came up. We weren't even looking to move out of state, but something came up. And, and the Lord said, like, like we had a sign that we just had to do this. And uh, they, they did. They're leaving the state. They, no plan or anything. And, and I can tell she was very, very nervous, but she had the faith to just follow through with them, um, with um, what they felt was right for her family. And I was just like, wow. So the 20,000 was going to actually make a difference. Interesting. Some people are asking about gold and silver stocks. Um, those are great if you're trying to speculate. Like if you, yeah, if you think that gold is going to go up $200 an ounce in the next 30 days because of something, some world event, then, then I would say go with the, st with a stock ETF like GLD and invest in that because you can liquidate that quickly and easily, just like you can a stock. But people that invest in gold and silver, they're really not doing it so that gold and silver can go up in value. They're doing it as portfolio insurance. They're trying to take a small portion of their portfolio and have it be in gold and silver to help offset anything that could happen in their stocks or real estate or other investments, even cryptocurrency. So um, people that invest in gold and silver are protecting. They're not necessarily speculating. Okay, so I, I see also some people asking if you deal in Canada. So if pe someone in Canada, say, wants to purchase? Well, if they have a retirement account, then we can do that. But we're not currently shipping to Canada. Okay. But we do have a lot of people reaching out to us from Canada, and it seems that many of them do have family in the States, or they'll have um, bank accounts in the States. And, and if they do, there is an off-site storage option. So for people in Canada, like um, one gentleman was a, a native of like the Green Bay area of Wisconsin, but now lives in Toronto, but still has the bank accounts and everything in, in, uh, in Wisconsin. So we went ahead with the transaction and the product is stored at a depository in Delaware. And that depository for a non IRA account, just it's a, it's affordable. It's only a half a percent of the value of the account per year. And it's insured. So there is that option. Okay. 
And he does take clients from all over the country. People are asking, oh, does he take clients from Tennessee? Does he take clients? <laughs> yeah. Andrew takes clients from all over the country. Everywhere. I'm sure. Even Everywhere. Hawaii and Alaska. Okay. Now, I've put your email and the website up, Andrew. But if there's any other information you want to give that I can put up on, uh, on a banner here, a phone, anything else you want to give? Okay, so so um, the the email address is probably one of the best ways. Okay, Just put together a quick email with um, with your name and uh, what it is that you're looking to do. So my phone right now has a lot of texts that have been coming in, and I'll give you a cell phone number where they can text to. But um, the email is probably best. Just just say. Um, um, my name is uh, John Smith. I'm in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I'm looking to uh, learn how to roll over my 401k. Or uh, I'm interested in gold and silver. But make sure that you mention that you heard about us from um, Amanda Grace, for sure. And um, yeah, that's a, and on our website, too, has a contact form. And it does ask those basic questions so that we can have an idea of, um, of who to have you speak with. Um, I can't talk to everybody that, that calls in or contacts us, but we do have several different associates and I'll try to pair you up with one that will help the best. We, I have one, a couple of people that are great for IRAs and a couple of people that are good for gold, a couple that are good for silver. So just give us the most information that you can give. And I will tell you too, if you go to uh, wwwarkarkofgrace hyphen ministries.com and you go to the shop section and scroll down all of Andrew's information and his company information is there as well. And you can also go there and, uh, and get to his website that way as well, just so people have multiple options to reach you because tonight, Andrew, your phones may be bombarded and your email may be bombarded. I'm so ready. Just want to make ready. <laughs> the animals are being surprisingly good. I said, look, Andrew, I don't know how this is going to go, like, you know, with the animals. So we'll just roll with it, you know, but they're being surprisingly good. So thank God for that. Uh, you know, people have a lot of, you know, because of inflation and other things, they have a lot of uncertainty about the market, financials, you know, um, their future, you know, and I tell people first, you know, we put our hope in Jesus Christ. The Lord gives us the wisdom that we need to make the right decisions to steward over properly what he's given us. Okay. And this is what this is about with Andrew is being able to properly steward and make wise decisions and also at the same time, defund the swamp and refund the kingdom. Cause I'd rather have you go to a believer who can properly counsel you and their people properly counsel you rather than take a shot in the dark. Amen. Amen. Yep. yep. Because it's, you know, you've got com some companies out there just like in any industry are better than others. Okay. And you want people that you can rely on that will be patient with you, that will counsel you, that will talk to you about these matters. Because I think these, there she goes. There goes Grace the dove. That's the dove in the background, Andrew. There she goes. They're starting. Uh, but I think sometimes in the church, and I'll, and I'll talk about it from this perspective, but sometimes in the church, we forget to counsel people on all other areas of life, biblically speaking. That's Wally. So they're all, I told, just when I okay. say they've been good, they all erupt. Uh, but we need to, in the church, get to the point where we're comfortable with counseling people in other walks and areas uh, and, and counseling them in the wisdom of God and biblically speaking so that they can make decisions about things going on in everyday life, like IRAs, right? Like their savings their money, their stocks. It's absolutely true. And um, one thing that, that we're hearing a lot of is um, people that want to convert their IRAs into a precious metals IRA. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, the custodians that they currently have their IRAs at, like these, these bank people, these brokers, they, they don't want to let the funds go. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this week, um, I had clients that were doing a, a seven figure uh, IRA rollover. This is yes. the fourth week of trying to get it converted. We can usually have them done in less than a week, but this is four weeks in and they're frustrated. And, uh, and they told the salespeople, 
that work for me that, um, yeah, we're frustrated. We feel like maybe you're not doing everything that you can do to, to get this done. So I called them and I said, let me tell you what's been happening. Okay. Your broker over at Raymond James has been playing games with you. He has been receiving the transfer requests from our mm -hmm. IRA custodian and just looking at them and not doing anything. I go, I know it's hard to believe this is somebody, you know, well, and you've referred your family and friends to them, but I promise you they're doing this. And I said, go down there today and just request a check. Just get a check out of your retirement account. And we'll use that check to, uh, to fund the new precious metals IRA. So they did that. They went down there and they spoke with the gentleman and he said, yeah, I, I've been doing that. Y your guy's right. I've been doing that for the last four weeks. And they said, what? Like, like, you've actually been ignoring our requests. Why would you do that? And he said, well, I just thought you would change your mind. And, uh, and I told them, mm -hmm. I go, this was designed for you to get so frustrated with the process that, that you just say, forget it, keep it where it's at. And, and the reason why I just chose to talk about this here at this exact moment is that that's exactly the reason why we need to get funds out of the centralized banking system because mm -hmm. they have so much control over us and they're, they're trying to get more control and they act like the funds that we have deposited with them that are our funds are theirs and, and they're not. That's right. So, so I just want to make sure that we, that we did cover that today before we were finished because um, these, these fresh stories that just happened, yeah. I just remember them for a week or two and then they're gone. This, it's always the same, the same thing happens. It's just a different version over and over and over every single week. So people should know that. You talk about things, you know, people, people know what they know about what they do for a living, but not about many other little things. Well, this is what we do. And I just try to give people a heads up about that. Yes. And, and, you know, I'll say this right now, if you're thinking about uh, shuffling your money around, you want to put part of it in gold and silver and you want to put part of it in a bank, put it in a bank that a isn't bullying their employees right now uh, to take certain inoculations and not bullying them uh, beyond faithful employees that have been with them for like eight years, 10 years, you know, that are just willing to just kind of, you know, bully them and throw them away. Do your research on banks, who runs them, who won't, I'm in the process of doing this myself to start moving things around. So I'm not giving you any advice that I'm not doing. I think Andrew would be amused to know that I have a bachelor's of science in finance from Siena College. And I started out as a hedge fund accountant at the age of 21 on a hedge fund worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. In Wall Street? Uh, it was called, well, I worked for a company called Globop. They were on Wall Street. They had a Westchester office as well. That's where I was out of Westchester, New York. This fund was called Rubicon. Half of it was in England and half of it. So it was in London. Half of it was here. So I literally had to get to work at like 6 a.m. because it was already 11 a.m. London time. And this fund had everything you could imagine in it. it, had gold and silver. It had different currencies, stocks, bonds, clients, you name it bonds it was there wow. in this fund so something went wrong it was like finding a needle in a haystack you know what i mean this is why you want to know where your money is responsible people you know watching over it putting it in tangible assets like gold and silver because it let me i could tell you from firsthand experience when i was doing it it could get real messy real fast yeah yeah it if does something's missing yep it's um and, and with financial markets, you know, when, when the markets are going up, like the stocks mm -hmm. just gradually going up right now, we're in a 12 or 13 year run. People made a lot of money in the stock market. When they go down, you know this, they go down a lot faster than when they go up. So right now people need to ask themselves, do I want to hang around in the stock market for another year or two to potentially make 10, 15% while at the same time risking everything that you've made in the last 10, 12 years? I, I, don't, I just don't think it's worth it. I think scaling down what you have in stocks and protecting mm -hmm. yourself with gold and silver is the way to go. It's um, it, Silver is a little bit more volatile. Silver can double or triple in price easier than gold can. Mm -hmm. it's a, if you have a high dollar stock account and you're trying to cash out part of it and put it somewhere where it can just be safe but not move yeah. much, gold might be better. Yes. It, so, and this is why, you know, when you call, you email, you go on their website, 
as many questions as you have, get it all out on the table so you can make the most informed decisions. They're, they're very well equipped. They're very knowledgeable. They're very capable of helping you through this because in the middle of what we're seeing happen in the nation, you want to protect what you have. You don't want to foolishly, you know, the, the story, the account of the, of the three servants and one of them just buried the talent. They did nothing with it. Remember, they did nothing with the talent. There was a parable that was told and the master gave each of them a certain amount of talent, which was one of their financial, I will, will say tenders for that time. And he took it, and he buried it in the sand and he did nothing with it. And he was given something to steward over, to use wisdom. And instead, all he did was bury it. So we don't want to do that uh, spiritually or physically, we shall say, uh, do what that servant did. But we want to be wise with what God gave us. We want to protect it. We want to use wisdom going forward with what's happening in the nation. Because, well, I'll put it this way. There's, and this, this is more for goods, but we can maybe put this to gold and silver a little bit. You have elastic goods and inelastic goods, right? You want something that if the market completely goes down is going to hold its value. You don't want it to completely fluctuate like a roller coaster with the market. You're going to give yourself agita and a potential heart attack. If you'd like to go on that ride, it's not fun. So what Andrew's giving you here is sound advice. Sure. When it comes to this. So once again, Andrew, how can they get a hold of you? Well, you can send me a text directly to my cell phone. It's um, 310-433-3524. It's 310-433-3524. And I can usually get back with you by text uh, within a day or two. Um, you, I try to do it as quickly as I possibly can, but there's a lot coming in. Even right now, there's probably about, uh, about I would say, 11 or 12 just right here. So, um, so uh, that from previous, so it's um, they do come in a lot. So just be patient with me for about a day or two sometimes, and I will have someone get back with you. So um, that's a good way. The website, but be sure to say that you heard about me from Amanda Grace. Well, thank you, Andrew. And Andrew, we know you're a busy man. We so appreciate your time. We will have you back on because people have so many questions. I couldn't get to all of them tonight. People are really curious. They, they have just, you know, people have so many things going through their minds right now that this is why we do these. Yeah, it's great. I love the question and answers because things that seem so basic to me because mm -hmm. I do it every day, yeah. they're really not that basic. People need to understand like, what are the first steps? Like one, two, three, what do I do? So people can call and find out what those steps are. Yes. And even, you know, I, I just before we close, I see a few people here writing about, well, what if I'm on Social Security and I'm getting a Social Security check? They could even start taking a small portion of that. They can. They can. Just uh, give us a call. Let us know what, what's on your mind and uh, we'll try to figure out the best way for you to go. Wonderful. Well, Mr. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, thank you so much for joining us tonight. The Thank animals were good till the end and then they erupted. Oh yeah. Well, just um, everybody keep in mind, keep those questions ready. Um, give us, give us a call, give us a text. And uh, I, I hope to be back soon. I want to see the rest of the animals. We will definitely bring you back on Andrew. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. God bless you. You too. God bless. God bless. Okay, everyone. That concludes our talk with Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals. Now, why do I do these things? Because I've begun to realize that as believers, we have to be equipped in many areas with wisdom because foolishness is the devil's playground, okay? So if we can be equipped with more and more wisdom in different and various areas, including what we've been given to steward over and less foolish in our decisions about it, it is actually helps protect us from the enemy's attacks. It actually helps protect us when we have wisdom because when the enemy tries to fool us with certain things or tempt us in or draw us into things, it could even be the stock market, okay? And it's very volatile. It's a form of gambling, okay? 
and uh, I don't like it personally. So when the enemy tries to do that, when we have sound advice and we're using wisdom and we're applying biblical principles at the same time, it helps to protect us spiritually as well. And it helps us to be able to listen for the leading of the Lord and who he wants us to help, how he wants us to utilize what he's given us, where he would like us to put it. You see, the Lord wants to guide all our steps. It says not some of the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. It says the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. That is every step we want ordered of the Lord. Order. Being in order with the Lord and in areas of our life makes it very difficult then for the enemy to cause chaos. And the enemy, when a stock market crashes, it's chaos. It causes chaos. And so we have to, and I'll tell you something interesting too. I find it interesting. They call it a bull market when it's doing well because bulls come from calves. And the, one of the Jews' downfalls was the golden calf at Mount Sinai and the golden images of those things that they would continue to make. So I find it interesting all of these years later, thousands of years later, you have it called a bull market, okay? I don't think that is by accident at all. But, um, you know, we have to use wisdoms in these things. And this is why I'd rather direct you to people who are believers uh, that can help you. So they get blessed as well. And we're helping each other, you know, because we give so many corrupt companies so much money to harm us. Think about your everyday bills you have to pay. How much money goes to corrupt companies to turn around and harm the citizens of this nation and harm this nation. So when we think about it that way, we have to start making better decisions on what we do and what we spend on, where we invest, what we give. You see what I mean? The Lord says for us to be cheerful givers. When we listen to the leading of the Lord and when we invest properly as well, because let me tell you something, even blessing somebody, just cheerfully giving to them in a way is an investment, you know? You're just investing in to what God has already given you. You're investing in somebody else now. You're giving it to them. You're blessing them with it. And you want to be able to freely do that and cheerfully give without even having to think about it. You know, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Now, we have to be careful. Now, this is what I always say. You give money and resources, you sow the word of God. I think over the years, the church has sometimes gotten it confused. And in order to benefit themselves, they like to say to sow money. We sow the word of God. We give money and blessings, okay? You see, we only have to please ultimately an audience of one, and that's almighty God. It doesn't matter what people think, what they want to ramble off what they want to say about you, because God ultimately knows. You see what I'm saying? He ultimately knows. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, I praise God that we can on this channel do prophecy and teaching and also equip you with wisdom in these areas to help you with all the questions you have with what's going on right now in this nation. I also love the fact that every time I pray at the beginning, the Lord told me to do it this way. When I open up in prayer at the beginning of the broadcast, if you notice in that prayer, I preach the gospel and the cross. If you notice in that prayer, I am preaching the cross. I am proclaiming why the Lord sent Jesus to the earth, why Jesus came to the earth, because we were sinners uh, what he did for us, that he became the sacrifice, that he took our place and was beaten, bruised, crushed, whipped, and pierced because of our sin and iniquity, because we were going to have eternal separation from God. So every time I pray at the beginning of the broadcast, I am preaching the cross. I am proclaiming what Jesus, Yeshua, did. 
And I would much rather proclaim what Yeshua did than start my broadcast on some weird tangent or angry rants. I would much rather start it off that way. And then go into whether it's prophecy giving you wisdom of events to come, whether it's teaching, equipping you with the word, or whether it's wisdom equipping you with things you have to do in your everyday life that we can tie back to the word of God. At least we're helping to equip you while at the same time proclaiming what God did because he so loved the world and what Yeshua did because he came in the flesh. So... This is why I do things the way I do it here, you know, and not everybody is going to agree with it or is going to like it. Some people uh, don't like uh, the animals. If you don't like it, you take it up with God, because this is how God had us construct this specific ministry. And I don't have time to be nitpicking like that at other people because I have too much to do for the Lord. And if my eyes are on the Lord first, then I'm going to do the task he's given me first and foremost. I'm not going to be constantly going down, trying to tear others down while I'm hiding things of my own life, not myself, but those doing it, hiding things of their own lives that they don't want anybody to know. You see, this is why it's got to be a balance. And this is why when I'm given a platform. I want to make sure to help equip you in every way possible. Helping other believers as well. Bringing all of us together. Gathering of the assembly. Proclaiming the works of the Lord. Proclaiming what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. Bringing in the prophecy. Bringing in the biblical teaching. And then tying it in to other areas that we need help with in our everyday lives that tie back biblically. And I have to tell you something that are amazing about these animals. More children watch and learn about Jesus and learn about the word of God and learn about prophecy because the animals are here. Okay? When God created animals and he created the garden he created we were meant to have faith like a child we were meant to be very childlike in our faith and animals were a part of that okay and i think people get so caught up in their own head knowledge that they forget what's really part of the kingdom and what we were meant to do on earth and what we were originally put in the garden of eden to do and they forget all that. And they go off on crazy, weird tangents. And you know what? I would rather do what we're doing here and do it for the absolute glory of God. Because this isn't an easy walk. It's not an easy life. Uh, what I have to do isn't easy. What I have to do with Chris isn't easy. You have to do it for the glory and glo God, the glory of God first and foremost. Everything else comes secondary to that. Okay? So I do it because I love Almighty God. Because he saved me. He not only saved me from eternal separation from him with a relationship with him through uh, by believing on his son Jesus Christ and what he did on this earth and letting him make me a new creation in Christ. But it's also because I have been through so much with the Lord that I know he's faithful. And you go through a lot of hard knocks when the Lord is prepping you and preparing you and bringing you up and rearing you up in him. You go through a lot of hard knocks and people can say whatever they want. They don't have to walk the walk you had to walk. They didn't have to lose what you had to lose. They didn't have to endure what you had to endure to get to where you are at that moment, okay? People forget you had to endure a life of hell before you ever started seeing the light on the other side, okay? So it's important to keep that in perspective as we go forward with this. It's important for that because 
I would rather help somebody else because a wise person learns from other people's mistakes. You see what I mean? And they don't make those same mistakes. So I would rather help people avoid pitfalls in many areas of life or help them in their relationship with the Lord in using wisdom in their life and using wisdom, how they carry out their business and using wisdom, how they carry out, um, you know, their walk with the Lord and using what I would rather help in many areas to equip them with that wisdom, including in their health and taking care of our physical bodies, which are our temples. You can only have God or the enemy choose one, choose who inhabits your temple and who dictates what happens to your temple. Okay. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy the Lord comes to give life and life more abundant. And so an abundant means many things. We're not, we're not talking about money here. Okay. Uh, I praise God that I am as well as I am now, because at one point I couldn't even walk. I praise God. He delivered Chris from what he delivered him from. I praise God that in his mercy, He's long suffering and he's patient with us and he loves us and he equips us and he walks with us and he talks with us. And I praise God that no one comes to the father, but through Jesus Christ, no one comes to the father, but through Yeshua. He is the door. He is the gate. That is where we go through to get to the father. And it is an honor and a privilege and humbling that I get to go before you and even say that because we are all sinners. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are all fallible, fallen men and women. There is not one of us that could ever hold a candle in any light year to almighty God and Jesus Christ. Never. Okay. They are far, far, far above every power, principality, person, and might far above. And so, In the time we're in right now, we have to recognize that. We have to live that. And we also have to ask the Lord constantly for wisdom and discernment in every area of life. So then we could be utilized in every way possible for the glory of God. Okay? Because there's many areas God wants to use us and operate through us. Every day, sometimes, there's an opportunity for the Lord to use us, whether it's great, whether it's little, whether it's big impact, whether it's planting a seed, whether it's the Lord wants to utilize us. And the more we learn and the more we able to discern and the more wisdom we gain, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That is what Solomon asked for. He didn't ask for gold and riches and things of that nature. He asked for wisdom first and foremost, because if you don't have wisdom, you're not going to know what to do with what God gives you anyway. We need wisdom in counsel. We need wisdom in our walk with the Lord. We need wisdom in how to conduct our households. We need wisdom in areas of business. We need wisdom in areas of teaching. We need wisdom in our health. Wisdom is something that is a necessity to properly navigate every area of life. Foolishness and double-mindedness is where the enemy gets people trapped. Okay. Anger and bitterness and jealousy is where the enemy gets people trapped. And I would much rather come on here and help you and give you the tools and help equip you and bring people on that can help equip you. Then come on constantly and going on um, basically angry rants. I don't see that as productive on this channel. I don't see it as helping anybody for me to constantly do that. I do see it as helping you for me to constantly help equip you, warn you of what's coming from the Lord, teach and bring others on to teach in areas alongside me that I am not the most knowledgeable in, okay? That's using wisdom. You see, when it comes to areas of health and areas of 
gold and silver and, 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 and investments. I am not the most knowledgeable in that area. Yes, I know some things, but I don't feel I know enough to give you a well-rounded education. So this is why we do these things and we bring people on like this so you can Maybe it'll answer questions that you've been having for a long time. Maybe it'll help you segue into something you've been wanting to do. Maybe it'll help you get right with your health. Maybe it'll help you get right in other areas. But this is why we do it. And we are happy that we are able to do this for you. And this is why I came on twice today, because it's time to start doing this. And it's time to start equipping people in many areas given what's going on in this world. You know, we want the remnant strong. We want believers strong. We want them steadfast in the Lord and strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and the armor on and us equipped with wisdom and us ready for battle and us ready to hear what the Lord wants us to do and go in that instruction, no matter what area it's in. We want to minimize the weakness so the enemy can't capitalize on it. And that's in many areas of life. So we praise the Lord for that. And I just praise the Lord. We can just come on and the animals can come on and uh, we can spend time with you. Yes, you know, in Deuteronomy, it says we shall lend to many nations, but we shall not have to borrow. I pray that. I praise you, Lord. I shall lend to many nations. And I don't mean lend like I'm going to charge you interest. That I could just bless those and I don't have to borrow. Praise the Lord. It talks about that in Deuteronomy. Now it shall be if you obey the Lord thy God and his commandments. Being careful to do all his commandments today. And it goes on. I think it's Deuteronomy. Hold on. I'll tell you. We'll get it up right now, and this is how we'll end. So I think it's Deuteronomy. Hold on. I want to see if I'm right here. Okay, guys. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, let's see. Yes, it is. It's Deuteronomy 28. So this is what I'm going to bring up for a minute. Okay. So we're going to do with the new King James version. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, new King James version. Okay. All right. Let me share my screen with all of you. Okay, and this is what it says. Hold on a second here. I want to get this back up for you. Because now I have it on the screen, but I need to be able to see it as well. So it's Deuteronomy 28, New King James Version. Okay. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which he commands us today, that the Lord our God will set us high above all the nations of the earth, or set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, for those of you of cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments, if 
you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and the produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed, heed, it means take counsel. If you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which he commands you today and are careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which he commands us this day to the right or to the left or to, or to go after other gods to serve them. And then it goes into disobedience. Okay. After that, the, the next part of this goes into the disobedient part and I will bring us back. Yes. If you obey, if you take heed, it's your choice. God has given us a gift of free will, okay? We get to make that choice if we heed, if we obey, if we listen to the voice of the Lord our God, if we listen to what he commands us, if we follow and keep his commandments, if we do not go after other gods to serve them. It's a choice. And praise God that those of us out there that choose the Lord, choose him. We'll never be perfect. We're never going to get it completely 100% right. But you know what? Trying to follow in the Lord's and Jesus's example and what the Lord would have us do. You see, Obadiah, I used him as an example recently. Obadiah would have been crucified by so many people today. Oh, they would have been screaming and yelling about him working in Jezebel and Ahab's court. They would have been screaming and yelling about what kind of person he was when they didn't even know Obadiah or didn't even know what he was doing there. When God had positioned him there in order to take the resources from the wicked and keep the prophets alive in the caves. And had God not positioned Obadiah there, we would have had a hundred dead prophets potentially. And Elijah wouldn't have went to Mount Carmel with all the prayers of the prophets going up into the ground when he faced off against the 400 prophets of Baal and the 300 prophets of Asherah. So it's up to us to follow and heed what the Lord has for us to do. Thank you, Wally. What the Lord has for us to do and how he has for us to do it. Because the Lord is raising up very unique people right now, okay? Some of these theological molds and these corporate uh, mega church molds are falling by the wayside because the Lord, we were made to be a peculiar people. We were made to be peculiar. We were made to be unique. And the Lord raises us up in our own unique gifts, abilities, and talents. Like Andrew's is precious metals. That's his gift, ability, and talent, okay? Mine deals in prophecy, teaching, and taking care of animals. That's where mine comes in. And the Lord is supposed to flourish us in that unique gift and ability. And then we're supposed to go to the Lord for wisdom on how to deal with the other things we have to deal with. Okay. Well, thank you for praying for us. I appreciate that. I'm glad you had a lot of questions that were answered tonight. I'm glad it helped many of you because that was the main reason for doing it is to just help you with some questions you had. You know what I mean? This is a free channel to all who come and we are happy to bring people on to help you with questions you have. And we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are unique. We are made by God unique. And we are called and created to be what he has called and created us to be. And we only have to please him. We only have to please him. He truly knows our walk. He truly knows our heart. He truly knows what we're seeking. He truly knows what we're questioning. He truly knows what we need advice and help in. 
because he knows all things. He knows every hair on our head. It's numbered. So I praise almighty God that we have such a wonderful father and almighty God that is the Alpha and Omega, knows all things, sees all things, is omniscient, omnipotent, is perfect and holy in all of his ways, and can help work all things together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. And that's where I'll end for tonight because we just hit an hour and five minutes. Now, there are some things I'm working on with the Lord here. And I'm going to say one at the end here, okay? But I'm going to go back to this. I will circle back to this on another broadcast. Sorry, Wally was chewing. That's Wally. Wally's doing right there. I was up. The Lord woke me up at like 3 a.m. last night to pray. And I was up praying. I was actually on my face before the Lord on the floor. I actually start a broadcast like that too. I am on my knees on my face because I need to be in a position of submission and I need to be on my knees before the Lord showing him reverence before I ever get on and talk to you. Okay. So that's how I feel. Now I was up praying and I heard about the cartels and this is what I heard for all the blood they have shed the cartels, their heads shall be struck now. So look for the heads of these cartels, things to happen that are reported, okay? So I believe we're going to see a lot of this reported. And I would watch for this, okay? Because there is um, a lot of iniquity there the Lord is going to deal with. So just watch for that. Be in prayer about that. Um, also, I would watch Zurich right now which I believe is in Switzerland, Quebec, which is in Canada. And I'm praying about a very serious incident within the Oval Office that is set to occur. So I just wanted to uh, give you those at the end because I was up last night praying. And uh, these are what I was able to jot down, what I was hearing. Uh, and so I wanted to share with you, but I'm praying for more detail on some of this. So let me just pray on this a bit. You pray on this a bit. Keep the faith as always. Armor up, equip yourselves. Um, I have a few announcements to make as we're ending. First of all, we're going on Frank's speech. So, Ark of Grace Ministries, and the name of the broadcast is going to be Armor Up with Amanda Grace. The videos will now be going on Frank speech as well. Also, I have two announcements to make. I, I don't know if I can get them up here, but I will announce it and I will tell you the details of it. Thank you, Wally. Wally's just gotten rip roaring going like towards the end of when Andrew uh, was coming on. Okay. So October 26, which is a Tuesday at 7.30 p.m., I will be at Mantle of Power, which is Paulette Polo Ministries. It is at the Harvest Training Center, which is at 69 Myrtle, M-Y-R-T-L-E Street in Cranford, New Jersey. So I'm going to be a Mantle of Power, Paulette Polo Ministries in Cranford, New Jersey, Tuesday, October 26 at 7.30 p.m. If you would like to attend um, you can Google it and um, I believe go on their ministry page and I'm sure they'll have some information there as well. And then I want to make sure that I also have for you, here it is, Saturday, October 23rd. So three days prior to that, uh, there's going to be God Stock 2021 in Bethel, uh, New York. It starts at noon at Bethelwood Center, which is at 200 Heard Road in Bethel, New York. I will be speaking there as well. I decided to just do a couple of um, local events I was invited to in October um, because we will be back on the Reawaken America tour in November. We're going to Texas. So once again, October 26, Tuesday, 7.30 p.m., I will be uh, a guest at Mantle of Power, uh, Paulette Polo Ministries, 
and which is in Cranford, New Jersey. And Saturday, October 23rd, starting at noon at, at Bethel Wood Center in Bethel, New York, is Godstock 2021. And so they're going to have some local speakers in New York there to talk and, yeah, begin to take back that area uh, since Woodstock occurred. So I think we should put our stock in God, meaning our hope, our faith should be in almighty God. So I just wanted to announce those two things. And uh, yeah. And that's where I think we are going to end the broadcast for tonight. I pray you got a lot out of it. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm glad I was able to do two today for all of you and um, and help uh, equip you further with Dr. Sherwood and then Andrew Sorcini. And uh, I just pray you continue to keep the faith. You have a wonderful rest of your week. Prayerfully, I will uh, be back on by the weekend or the beginning of next week. There are some things I want to pray on uh, to be able to discuss with all of you. There are some things biblically I'm looking at also to be able to discuss with all of you. So please uh, just give me some time on that. <laughs> just give me a few days to pray on some of these things before I share more because there I have a feeling and I can feel it in my spirit, there's more coming. So just, I'm going to take a few days to pray on this and to just wait on the Lord. And I will uh, prayerfully be back on by the beginning of the week. So thank you for joining me. We love you all. God bless you. Keep the faith and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Have a wonderful night, everyone.